Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is Dr. Kristen, and we are here with Monarch Family Chiropractic to do our final workshop of the week on flexibility and mobility. So as we get into what that looks like, we're going to jump right into talking about the definitions of those things and what does that mean to us and why do we care, right? So we really want mobility, right? The spine, the body, the joints, everything's designed to be in motion. Um, with that comes flexibility and needing to define the connective tissues that bring our joints, our bones to our muscle bellies, right? So the um, ligaments and tendons are connecting those two things. So they have that ability to temporarily extend or elongate and get longer and have that flexibility. Um, and then more of that mobility and um, um, bigger, bigger movements with the contraction and relaxation and flexibility is going to happen with the muscle bellies. So we want that mobility in the human body. We're not designed to be stiff, stagnant, and, and not moving. Um, we are designed to have that motion. And then an ideal range of motion is um, pertinent, right? If we don't have the right range of motion, we see a breakdown in the body's ability to do the functions. And then the ability to, when it decreases motion, then it creates an instability. And then that leads to um, not just the poor movements, but then difficult to do motion and movements in a good way to build strength or again, stability and endurance. So we have no power and strength if we can't do the motion properly. What ends up happening is an injury from a compensation, right? One side moves better than the other. And we tend to then see a compensation pattern happen and the body will only do that or the joint will only do that so long. It's like, driving your car when it's very well much out of alignment and it pulls every time you're driving or it pulls every time you hit the brakes. That's what's happening in your joints of your body when you're pulling and it's moving in a way that's not supposed to, or when it's very asymmetrical to the other side of the body and the motion that it's supposed to do from left to right or front to back. And so it's such a cornerstone of our health, that mobility, because of those exact reasons. And so we want to look at how do we support that? And so we're going to talk about mobility for hip shoulders and a little bit of that mid thoracic spine and down into the calves and ankles. So we've got some beautiful pictures of Dr. Mayakin showing these activities and these stretches. So one that we call the shin box is where you're in this posture that docks in and it's doing rotation, internal and external rotation of um, the legs and of the hips more specifically. And so when you have a, um, as she's doing her right leg in front, her, her left leg is in back, they want a 90 degree angle of those two. So again, if this is a concern for you having knee injury, hip injury, we need to modify this, but this is a way to do a stretch and get really good mobility of that hip joint. So when we're doing that, this is a showing a better angle of her from the side view. So you can see kind of that 90 degree bend um, in both hips and um, knees. And so as she rotates, oh, did I have that verbiage on here? Maybe not. Um, but as she's rotating her one leg um, out in front of her, so when you're externally rotating on the front leg, you're internally rotating on that back leg that she's doing. So you would switch that if you need to do that, to do that motion in both directions, right? So then right leg would go in the back and the left leg, leg would come up front and you would do that ex in external rotation of the hip on that front leg. And then when the leg is tucked the way it is in the back, that's doing the internal rotation. So it's just good motion for, excuse me, for the hips without bearing any weight, without lunging, and easy to start with. But when going to shoulder for that upper body, there are so many components in the shoulder. There's so many components for the rotator cuff and then how the neck is involved in that and then how that pulls into our lats and everything into our mid and our lower back, right? So a lunge is a great way from the knees. Again, if the knees don't bother you, and if they do, um, you can certainly, even if they don't, you should try this and you should be doing it with a pillow. We should have a pillow under Doc's knee there um, that's on the floor. Um, grab a throw pillow, grab, grab a blanket, grab a yoga mat, um, and get on something that's not a concrete floor like we have here. Um, so we're going to lunge at that 90 degrees like she is with her knees. So her 
toes are not, her knees are not going over her toes. Um, and we're being square to the wall, right? So that the opposite knee is pushing the foam roller. So her front knee there in that left picture is pushing the foam roller into the wall. So that's stabilizing the core by holding that knee and that 90 degree angle of her leg steady. Then the motion is with the um, arm. And so we're rotating the hand and kind of thinking of like, when we talk about the clock motion for the low back, this is like the clock motion for the upper back. So our arms at that 90 degree angle, straight up in flexion, right at our ear, if we can. And then we're rotating the arm or the hand, I should say, around the wall without moving your waist right? Without moving the torso. So you're letting the hand come um, back to about, say, as we're looking at that far right picture um, here, that doc is at about two o'clock, right? And so you're taking it to comfort without irritating the shoulder, without irritating the neck, without irritating the hip, if that does pull into the hip for you. And you're bringing that arm around, if you can, to three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, and down to six, right? So we're doing that motion from 12 o'clock, on back and down. And then you're gonna obviously switch sides. Then you're gonna put that um, right knee up and out and the foam roller or something of like a ball. So that again, she has no rotation with her knee in towards the wall. It's just at a nice 90 degree angle. So that tension of just holding that foam roller is keeping her in a good posture. And it's allowing that, uh, keeping that rib cage straight forward. So you see, she's not turning her body into the wall. She's keeping her chest forward and looking forward in the same direction as her hips. And she's just moving the arms and the shoulders. So again, if this is, if you have a shoulder injury, if you have a rotator cuff injury, this is not where we're possibly starting you. We're going to see what angles you can be at. And then we need to improve it from there. Okay. For what motions you can do to release that. Now, as we work into more of the mid back um, and the lower back and that thoracic cavity, which is our, all of our rib cage. We want to work on this motion and movements from a flexion extension. So that's that forward and back. And then the retract the protraction and retraction of shoulders is hard to show. It's almost out of video. Um, and so that may be one that we need to show you in the office once you're here. But if you know, most people understand cat cow, we're in a very neutral spine with our knees right under our hips there and our wrists right under our shoulders. So as you see Doc's posture in the upper right picture, we're looking at getting that flexibility of that motion to and from of the rib cage. So we're dropping down, um, or I guess starting with the with the cat, we're rounding up, right? We're tucking our chin down, we're rounding our lower, our, our mid and our lower back um, and pushing up towards the ceiling. And then you're gonna, as you exhale air out, this is a breath in with that rounding. And then as you drop down into like that cow motion on the bottom right there, we're letting air out, we're dropping chest down to the ground, all while our shoulders stay over our wrists there. And we're letting the low back drop in, letting our belly drop to the floor. And with that breath out, then breath in the other way. Retraction and protraction of our shoulders is um, a motion that we want to see our shoulder blades move like this. And when they move properly, that's what they do in the upper back. When they don't move properly or they're really stuck out and they don't glide, then what you see your arm and your shoulder do is this, right? So instead of a nice glide where it's supposed to move like my arm just did, if it's stuck in a position, we just tend to see instead of a glide, we see a like it just raises, right? It just knows how to do this motion if it doesn't have this ability to do this. And so sometimes we can see that in a cat cow with you. And then more times we can do is retraction and protraction motion. It's a similar motion like what you're doing when you do those wall angels, right? We're trying to bring our shoulder blades down the back end of us necessarily not squeezing them together and pushing them together, but just dropping them down. So I'm going to, hopefully you can see this motion. I'm going to have to turn my back to you, but the retraction and protraction in the shoulders is key to it being done proper. So I'm going to, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing if I'm here. Hopefully you can hear me, but I want you to watch my shoulder motion. This is retraction. Okay. This is retraction. This is retraction. It is not this, where I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together, okay? It is dropping the shoulders down and it lets the shoulder blades come down, 
Okay, so when I'm doing a wall angel, it looks like that. And yes, we add a little bit more of a motion into it, but it's drawing the shoulder blades down, not squeezing them together. So hopefully that came through with what you could see in the type of t-shirt I'm wearing and just what my shoulder blades were doing, that I wasn't pushing them out and squeezing them together. So it's really important when we're doing motions that relate to our shoulder and then affect our neck and can affect our low back as well. So if we wanna get extension, we wanna open up that mid rib cage and spine. It's a really great one to do on a foam roller. I would suggest doing a one without the knobs on it just to start at a more beginner level if you've never rolled through your thoracic or your rib cage um, mid back with a, a roller. Um, you've seen the multiple ways we show how to roll with a foam roller on the foam roller workshops, but this one is really specific to how to just get that extension, right? We all spend so much time here, so much time in computers, forward, carrying babies, um, even us adjusting, right? A lot of the motions are forward. And so what we need to do is open and extend back. That's why the wall angels are such a key motion for engaging that um, mid back and having that mobility and flexibility when it gets used to this all day. So this gets tight and this pack of the shoulders creates this neck tension right here in our upper um, neck and the front of our neck, which therefore from that forward lean creates all the tension here, the tension here, and the tension back in between the shoulder blades. So this is an awesome motion to create that mobility. And anytime you're not sure what to do, do extension open up because it just gets us out of the posture we're in 80% of our day. So you can see how doc has it between kind of at our shoulder blades and you just practice with gently rolling back over it. And then when you can extend the head and the shoulders open. And again, if that's too advanced for you, we start slower on a, on a foam roller without dropping the head and shoulders back. But again, if you've got decent extension, that's the motion you should be able to do. Hence there's no injuries. There's no, um, major degeneration or spinal decay to where you can't extend to that degree. So that's, you know, and it getting to an advanced place for some people, but again, that's where we want to start is anything we can do to extend and open up that cavity. And ankle mobility is getting into that, the foot into that um, very flat space on the ground. Here she is pushing knee over toe. She's using the um, broomstick to kind of support her so we're not doing any collapsing of the ankle. We're not rolling into the middle of the ankle there to the middle of her arch right here by her big foot or big toe. We are keeping knee right over toe and right over um, ankle. There's no leaning in, there's no rolling out. And it's just in, as she tips forward there by keeping her foot planted, you get a very, very good um, ankle stretch and calf stretch. And there's different ways we can do this again, if that's um, hard for you to do, uh, but it can be easier than standing and doing it, depending on what your ankle and knee flexibility is. And again, we're never on a hard surface with our knees. There should be a pillow under her right knee there. Okay. So nobody doing this at home without some cushion under your knees. So lastly, how many, when should we do this? How often? So we talk about just starting with 10 reps a day. You can always build up to adding a second set of 10 and then a third set of 10. I encourage patients to be doing a gentle stretch of some sort as they get up, get moving, get in the shower, hit, let the warm water hit them and get go before they get out on the door and into the car and onto work or onto whatever your day consists of. Then adding that in midday at some point, maybe after, at a lunch break and then at the end of your day getting that motion of opening up after a day of possibly sitting or hovering over screens, kiddos, patients, um, uh, and whatnot. And when do we want to perform these? So as I just said, it's really about mobility before workouts, but flexibility after, right? So we want to do a warm up and a cool down. And in our warm up, that's really where those mobility pieces come in. We've got to warm muscles up. Um, we've got to get that elongation happening so that they can have the flexibility they need so that we don't injure something. And then you get the flexibility in the cool down of muscles have blood flow to them, a lot of warmth and heat and they're loose. And then we want to make sure we continue to stretch and lengthen 
that muscle belly back out after it's contracted in that workout, as well as the tendons and ligaments that are attaching the muscle to the bone, right? So we've got to have those pliable and very lubricated joints and, um, and muscles as we then take them out of a contracted state and into a more relaxed or elongated state. And that's what flexibility is and what that gives us. So great ways of doing it are multiple types of stretches. Some of the ones we just showed you in those specific three categories. Um, and that tools would be foam rollers. You could use like a broomstick. We have shown multiple ways to use the tools you have at home, a tennis ball, lacrosse ball. Um, I've used even, um, rolling pins to do certain little flexibility and, and trigger point motions on legs and arms and things that you can reach yourself. Um, yoga is a great form of flexibility and mobility because it's giving you motion as well as elongating, holding stretches and elongating those um, um, big muscle parts, body parts, as well as some of the smaller intrinsic postural ones, right? By holding those postures. So we encourage you to join us um, in office and show us your takeaway and which one you go are going to incorporate. And if you're incorporating all of these, then we can give you something new to incorporate. Um, and if you're feeling challenged with it because of an injury or because of any other reason that you feel you either can't be on the knees or the shoulders have had work done on them or injuries or um, tears to them, then we want to just modify what you're doing and how far you're going. So I look forward to your takeaways. And as we come into spinal workshop um, closing, I want to just ask of you, who do you know? Who do you know that has rigidity in their spine, poor flexibility, poor mobility when they're trying to get up and down or in and out of chairs or in and out of cars or in and out of beds, um, or just can't bend down and do the things they used to be able to do. We can create flexibility and mobility through adjustments and then through the proper movements that the spine is supposed to do once it can move. So our patient appreciation week is coming up at the first week of November. For the next few weeks, we are going to be challenging our patients to reach out to their community and the people they love and they want to see have better health and send them in up to uh, November 4th through the 7th. Any new patient visit that is in open and in the schedule is at Docs and My Expense. So all of those are done um, to at no cost to uh, our patients or our patients, family members and friends that um, want to come in and take advantage of that. So you just call the front desk and let the gals know that you would like to get on the patient appreciation week and or someone that you know does, and we will get them set up and it's first come first serve for those available appointments. So that is how we want to serve, how we can support if things are needed in the spine to be supported in flexibility and mobility. Um, they're just, they don't have to have pain to come in and get checked. Um, that's not really what it's about. It's about how is your body functioning to the best of its ability? And is there anything that it needs support with and can we help? So we're um, anybody that also does a takeaway sheet from this gives us feedback on the um, channel, does some Facebook posting and tagging when they're here with us um, and, and really sharing what they're learning from a workshop, even if it's one little tidbit. Um, we have takeaway sheets here at the office, and you can also send those types of things into Jesse through Review Wave, through the text wave chain. Um, but those are what patients read when they come in here. They really want to know what are other people experiencing and what are they getting out of the workshops and what are they getting out of things they're learning. Um, in doing so, we will put your name on a ticket and put it in our prize bowl for the prizes that are going to be drawn during that patient appreciation week at the 1st of November. So um, we want to honor you and we want to reward you for taking time to educate yourself and do things that support your self-care and the things you can do when you're outside this office to have most health and vitality possible. So thank you for your time tonight and joining us about flexibility and I look forward to your takeaways. I'm Dr. Kristen and we'll see you uh, next workshop next week. Thanks so much.